McDonald's. McDonald's like, Corporation is looking into putting commercials into our brains while we're sleeping. And that's, we can look that up. Absolutely. I gotta look that up. Understood. I've heard of that. Understood. But now imagine when, if they can do that next year, oh, I'm who's, with you. who's been doing it for the last decade or so? I'm with you. I'm right? 100% with you. So yeah. now when we look around the world and we see everybody acting the way that they are acting, Let's consider that these intrusive thoughts have already been present. What do we do about this? This is the, these, are, these are the weapons of war contemporarily. It's very unfortunate, but it used to be that war was a bit more noble when we selected people, we put them in uniforms, we sent them over there to the battlefield and we said, fight for us. And effectively that would have been an, uh, an act of attrition of each nation's resources until there was a victor. Now, unfortunately, they've circumnavigated the battlefield. Nobody's dressed in uniforms anymore, and the front line is every neighborhood that we're in. And the infrastructure is still under attack. It's just that now the average mortgage payer is in the line of fire. The list of Havana Syndrome-like symptoms, which my South Pole crew and many South Pole crews are suffering, that other agencies are suffering, if people pay really close attention, they're gonna notice that these symptoms are prevalent in the general population as well. Interesting. I, I interviewed a uh, former CIA uh, agent about this uh, who has Havana Syndrome and uh, has been speaking out on it uh, quite a bit. His name's Mark Polypernopoulos. But um, what, I mean, is there anything else going on down there? <laughs> I mean, we just went through a lot of stuff here. Yes, actually. Uh, there's a system known as ELF, extra low frequency. Uh, it's also a massive antenna that's embedded in the ice there. When I arrived to the facility as a tradesman and firefighter, I was um, read into how everything worked because I needed for the safety of my crew to be able to battle fires and, and engage things appropriately. And at the onset, I was told that the ELF system is off. It's defunct, it's disabled, it is just sitting dead in the ice. But through my uh, need to make an additional repair on something else and tracing back to a sub panel, I was finding the circuit that I needed to lock out, tag out, and do all the safe repairs. But then I noticed that this other breaker that was supposed to be off was in the on position and it was listed as the ELF. And I ran it up my chain. I said, what's going on here? I said, this is supposed to be off. I was told it's off now. And I was just given a hard it's on. And that was the end of my need to know. They didn't want to tell me anything else. You, you have identified the circuit that you need to work on. You have been informed that you can safely do your job. Carry on. So I did my job. I made the repair that I needed to on the circuit next to the circuit that I was now informed is duly on and operating. So the ELF is up and running and that, again, is a multifaceted directed energy weapons platform. Do you have pictures of any of this stuff? I have a lot of pictures of me in these facilities. Um, they mostly just prove my presence. Can, if you hand those over, I'll display them on screen right now, if I can get them. I can get you pictures before you present this to the world. I would appreciate that. Let's talk about the clear air system called Aero. Yes. Commonly referred to as the no-fly zone. Yes. The ARO building, A-R-O, is the Atmospheric Research Observatory. It is listed on the chart, the one that I gave you as well, um, as a no-fly zone in the vaguest sense of the term at first glance. But as any pilot knows, there's always, you know, fine print. So the no-fly zone, as listed at the South Pole Station because of Arrow, simply provides a limit to the ability for a plane to fly too low. It sets the floor at 8,000 feet. You can't fly below 8,000 feet. A lot of people like to try to claim that there's a hole at South Pole Station and there's a no-fly zone that protects from you flying in an area that'll see the hole. And that's just total shenanigans. The no-fly zone limits your ability to fly low, not high. So with that height available, you will see everything available to see, which is ice as far as the eye can see. There is no hole in the ice at the South Pole Station. What, is, what are you blowing the whistle on? 
that there are technologies at the South Pole Station that people can't even consider that exist on this planet. Like what? Directed energy weapon systems is something that people need to get in their vocabulary fast. The ice cube neutrino detector is not simply a passive listening device as presented for the science that they're claiming it to do. It also has the capacity to transmit. There are um, embedded in the ice what are called digital optical modules, DOMs. They're about the size of a basketball. The array embedded in the ice is one kilometer by one kilometer by one kilometer. It is the world's largest telescope. And now because we have proven that it can transmit, it's the world's largest directed energy weapon system. It is responsible for the earthquakes in Christchurch, New Zealand in 2011 on the front end of the year. How do you know for a fact that that was responsible for that? Because I was present and I have gone over this with the pertinent people that I will not be releasing their names. Okay. But I was on the team, let's just say, and I've confirmed this. Well, I've provided documentation from the actual manufacturer specs. So this unit was um, constructed, operated, and maintained by the University of Wisconsin, and just like every other device on the planet, whether you're driving an M1 Abrams tank or operating the ice cube neutrino detector, there's um, operator's manuals that tell you how things work. Right there in that information, free for everybody to find. I found it myself. Um, I was directed to find it, and I'll put it that way, and release this information. And it states very clearly that each one of these DOMs can transmit at 2,047 volts each. So these are currently the facts of life. How do you know, I mean, how do you, what I, well, I guess what I'm asking is how did it even come to your attention that this triggered an earthquake? If you're at the South Pole and New Zealand had an earthquake, I mean, how did you know it came from the South Pole? Without divulging names, without divulging names. I could only say that it was communicated to me from team members that were present and fully read in at the time that they were aware. And since that time- um, At the immediate, medic like the same day? Oh, absolutely. It was understood. Well, what was said? That we accidentally hit Christchurch, New Zealand twice when they were trying to fire up this weapon for the first time that it was, it was friendly fire, it was not on purpose, but it occurred that the system is designed for that. And it was just friendly fire. So this, is a, so this is a telescope? That sounds like a, is it a telescope? Absolutely, is it? It, is, it is a neutrino detector, for sure. It can accomplish its primary purpose. It can also transmit and then provide a, a multifaceted platform for directed energy weapons systems. Do you have any idea how the earthquake was initiated? From misfiring the system. Where did, I mean... Where were they targeting? Yes. I don't know. Does it go into the earth? Does uh, it go can, into the atmosphere? It can definitely go through the earth. I would consider that it might be able to do stuff in the atmosphere. I haven't heard that statement laid at its feet. Um, but I wouldn't put it past it. I don't want to try to limit the functions of this device by my imagination or experience. I believe that's one of the problems with directed energy weapons is they are not like standard weapons of old where you have a gun and a particular caliber bullet, you pull the trigger and it does one thing. These platforms are way more complex than that. They do a lot of things. What else do they do? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, this system, additionally in regards to the neutrinos, it detects the neutrinos that are apparently coming off of the new exotic propulsion systems for either off-world UFOs or reverse engineered stuff on our planet. What is neutrino? Uh, neutrino is a near massless particle that goes at, close, or beyond the speed of light. It is so small that it can pass between the electron shell and the nucleus of pretty much every atom on the planet. And the capacity of being detected at the South Pole Station, when the neutrino impacts the nucleus of the water molecule of the ice in the glaciers at the pole, a reaction occurs. The nucleus and the neutrino become destroyed. A muon is created and ejected and a blue flash of light known as Cherenkov radiation flashes in the ice. And that's what the DOMs, the digital optical modules are detecting. That's their primary purpose as presented. 